in her sixth season here on the bench at Boston College. Away we go. And official Ed Sidlaski threw it up. Boston College in those gold uniforms immediately finds Sidbury. Ivy delivered the pass, and Taya Sidbury gets the first two. Get a presence down low early on. Sidbury, probably the bigger player on the floor for both teams, going to utilize that paint to her advantage. UMass Lowell is an undersized team, and they've got two freshmen in that starting lineup. Actually, three of them today with Rain Durant getting entered in just for the second time in her young career in the starting five. Very guard heavy. They like to have guards on the wings and rotate from the top of the point. Those freshmen are Lindsey, Rice, and Durant. This is an experienced player, Leilani Rodriguez. And it rolled off. Offensive rebound by Maddie Rice, one of the rookies. She hails from Charlottesville. Father was a great football player, played for the Dallas Cowboys. You see that physicality there, just going right up, not afraid of the contact. Andrea Daly has been the leading scorer for Boston College. Comes in averaging at 16 points a game. Meanwhile, it's Tiana Todd letting it fly. And out of bounds, last touch by Dontavia Wagner. It's a shot that Tiana Todd has been hitting of late. There's Denise King in her third season. Previous was an assistant under Tom Garrick for three years on the bench in Lowell. Coach Garrick left for Vanderbilt to become an assistant coach. Also a thousand point score at URI. Pulling for two, Lindsay, and she didn't hit anything on that. First shot for the freshman we highlighted at the outset, coming off of that 22 point game a week ago against Fordham. And there's Daly going to work. Defended well inside it was by Rain Durant. Boston College will keep it. Rain Durant mentioned got the starting call today for Coach King. Alex Gitchenko, Georgia State transfer, had started five games, but she's not in there. Nice play, cut to the basket, Dontavia Wagner. Inbounds, baseline underneath, worked to perfection. Yeah, Eagles were able to, to get that restart off that zone defense, UMass Lowell didn't get back into position to set it up, and that's what led to the easy lane. Kayla Ivey on a reach-in is called for the foul as she went for the steal. Lowell hasn't played in eight days. Seven days off after the 0-6 start. And we asked Coach King about it. She said that was a very good time to have a full week. Yeah, a nice little reset. Gives your players some time to adjust, get over any maybe nicks or bruises that they've had. Their leading scorer, Millie Carrera, has missed the previous couple of games in concussion protocol. We watched her warm up today, so we may very well see Carrera, a six-year player, get into the game at some point. They turn it over here. And if she can give anything, Coach King said that would be a bonus. Yeah, such a talented player. It's really grown in her career. Played in the SAC for about four years and now having an opportunity here to play D1 and taking those talents, kind of utilizing it. You see UMass Lowell get right back into his own defense. Dontavia Wagner. Ivy finds JoJo Lacey out of the corner and she picks up right where she left off at Kentucky. A big smile on JoJo Lacey's face as that one rattled in. Inside slashing was the point guard Sydney Watkins couldn't finish but chased it. You got a point guard who's your leading rebounder, seven per game off the boards for Sydney Watkins. Miami, Ohio transfer. She does a bit of everything for Coach King and Lowell. Shot clock to five as Lindsay finds Watkins for three. And it's a defensive rebound this time, Taya Sidbury. Wagner spinning over her right shoulder. Snatched it right back from Maddie Rice, and Wagner scores. Some gimme those from Dontavio Wagner, the ref. Watkins was looking at the ref. Ref says, there's nothing I could do. That's an easy grab from the rebound. Just wanted it a little bit more. Did Dontavio Wagner, who's got four. Seven in a row for Boston College to build a seven-point lead. Lindsay on the baseline, leaves it back for Rice. 
And Maddie Rice has both of the buckets for the Riverhawks. Got to credit BC's defense, though. That's about the fifth possession where UMass has to shoot with the buzzer down under 10. Sidbury. Second basket for Taya Sidbury as she had the position on Maddie Rice. This Lowell's. is what BC thinks that they need to do today. They need to attack in the interior. And for Lowell, they have to get that help side defender to come across on that zone defense. Sidbury got her hands on the pass, but look what I found, says Rain Durant. All freshmen scoring thus far for Lowell as Durant gets on the board. Nice long stretch here between whistles, too. Already almost midway through the first quarter. I love the free play when you're just allowing both teams to play. Oh. Same spot for Lacey. Same result for JoJo Lacey. Two for two corner pocket threes. You talked about it, having the confidence in that last game. She is pulling the trigger here today. And Lowell calls timeout after the very extended stretch between the stoppage. Well, JoJo Lacey, the senior from Douglasville, Pennsylvania, coming off the bench again. And after a 15-point game at Kentucky, breaking out from a slump, she's found her spot on the court. These are not the same shot. There were two different ones, I promise you. Need about midway through the opening quarter. Austin College, 14-6. And Lewis Sanchez, they've gotten good, clean looks. Already, you can see they've made six of their nine shots, including a couple of threes from JoJo Lacey. Yeah, JoJo Lacey, we were just talking at the break, two of 27 in the first seven games of the season from the three-point line. She's now five of eight with the two made today, the three of six against Kentucky. She's finding a groove, and that's what Boston College needs. They need some players off the bench that can find the scoring and get points. And JoJo Lacey doing that for Boston College here today. Meanwhile, Dontavia Wagner and Taya Sidbury on the interior each have four points. Out of the timeout, almost a turnover by Sydney Watkins, and now she's tied up. Arrow will keep it with the Riverhawks, 14 to shoot. Andrea Daly was taken out in favor of JoJo Lacey just two minutes into this game, Lewis. We didn't catch any injury-related issues, but that's something to monitor. Remember, she's BC's leading scorer. Absolutely. Having a good game, came off that performance. 14 points against Kentucky. Leilani Rodriguez, Worcester native. The first basket, Redshirt Jr., who's had a couple of injury-plagued seasons. She's been in Lowell for four years. And it's only the second season she's been able to get on the court. Right side three, Lacey. Wagner couldn't hit the putback. Pretty good look there for Dontavia. Here, the Riverhawks, you got to take advantage of these opportunities. Freshman Lily Krashevets, native of Hungary, checking in off the bench for Coach Mack, and she got the steal. Krashevets, the tallest player on BC. Let it fly from the outside. It's a good warm-up shot coming off the bench, right? You got the space. They're going to give you that all day, so why not see if it's in your range to start? We talked to Joanna Burnaby McNamee pregame. She said that she really thinks that Lily Krashevets could have a big game here today using the size that Lowell, frankly, can't match. Yeah, absolutely. And one of those you want to see more, maybe attack, get some confidence going, driving to the lane. But again, when you have a, a big that can shoot, you want to make sure that their shot is available throughout the game. Lacey, right corner three. Well, she hit two from the left corner. Now she's missed two from the other corner. Four in a row for the Riverhawks out of the timeout that Coach King called. This is what started it from Leilani Rodriguez. And just a great job here to size up JoJo Lacey. Little hop step to her favorite spot. You know, those mid-range jumpers have been falling. Maddie Rice has hit a couple. Now Leilani Rodriguez. I like that they've put the ball in Watkins' hand. That's a travel. Abby Lindsay, you, you got to dribble when you're going to move like that. Novice like me, I could call that one over here. <laughs> Sometimes your brain moves faster than your body and you just keep going. So a little bit of a rough start for Lindsay, but again, coming off that incredible performance against Fordham, 
want to see her and try to find her rhythm in this game. Yeah, when you put up 20 plus point efforts as a freshman, all of a sudden then you appear in the scouting report, become more of a marked person for the defense. Fresh of bats. Oh, double clutch and the bank for Lily Kresh of Etz. Sometimes they open the bank on Sundays, Josh. Lindsay, nice pocket pass for Rice, and Maddie Rice is four for four. The freshman from Charlottesville, you said it, her dad, an NFL football player. Eight of the 12 for the Riverhawks, Crash of Etz. Couldn't finish. Bowles gotten back into this game out of their timeouts. Rodriguez, see that big brace that she wears on her right knee. Talked about all the injury issues she's had to withstand. She'll let it fly and Krashevets didn't let her get it off. The size of Krashevets making an impact. Lacey, travel. It's a great job by Rodriguez to cut off the angle there. Jojo Lacey on the turnover. Her coach said that she'd make a big impact today, and we're seeing it immediately from the native of Hungary, Lily Kreshevets. I love that double pump. You just wait for the defender to go by, still shoot it while in the air, and then right there, closing the gap on Leilani Rodriguez. That's 6-3 on 5-5. Five, five. That advantage belongs to Kreshevets. And again, it's just size that Lowell cannot match. Sydney Coombs, senior from New Market, New Hampshire, checks in. Back up. She's one of the interior players. Another jumper goes down. Maddie Rice, five for five in the opening quarter. We've got a two point game. Sidbury tried to feed it through traffic and turn it over, but Lowell gives it right back. Well, Josh, you, you let a team hang around long enough. They're going to get some confidence and build some momentum. You see Rodriguez working out on the bike there as she was subbed out. Might have been after that contact, drawing the charge the other way for JoJo Lacey. So trying to work out that right leg. Yeah, I think that's just probably something she's always dealing with after all those knee injuries. When she comes out of the game, you got to stay loose. Or ACL tears. It's just incredible. She loves the game so much. She doesn't know what she'll do without it. So she continues to play. Daly back in there for BC and Andrea Daly on the board. Big bucket, the final 90 seconds of the quarter. Told you she had quickly been put on the bench today. The story for Lowell has been freshman Maddie Rice. Meanwhile, you got the reserve guard Gabby Ross, one of the five freshmen in the rotation and a turnover. Daly and Kayla Ivy free to fire. Three pointer for Kayla Ivy. Good ball rotation, good find to Ivy. And you know, Kayla comes out, she's one of the first players on the court for either team during warm ups. And she is working on that three point shot, trying to get right back into groove and that rhythm that she had right before her injury. Drive and dish into the right corner. Here is the red hot rice. Lindsay finding Rice. Does she have six for six? No. Oh, everything but though. That hit every part of the rim. It's been a quarter of her life. Good start to this one for the freshman. Nice find. Ivy and Daly couldn't hit it once. Couldn't hit it twice, but she'll be at the free throw line. One where Kayla Ivy's going to say, hey, you messed up my assist. <laughs> she loves that number. She's one of the best. She's the best in the conference and one of the best in the country at assist to turnover ratio. She distributes so well, has great eyes on the court. And already four assists here in the opening quarter for Kayla Ivy. 28 now, 28 and four in the last couple of games for Ivy. Just incredible. That's, an, that's a number you don't really see a lot of. Boston College, a seven nothing run here. Over the final 90 seconds of the quarter, nine point lead all of a sudden. Ball got kicked on the pressure. Last four points from Andrea Daly. 
with a Kayla Ivey three-pointer in there. And pressure with 10 seconds left in the quarter results in a foul one against Tiana Todd. like this. You put the pressure on UMass Lowell, try to get another shot at it with 10 seconds left. On the drive is Watkins blocked out of bounds. Dontavia Wagner met her right at the rim. Only three seconds left in the quarter here for Lowell. Another day at the office for Dontavia Wagner just walks away and gets to her teammates like it's nothing. Boston College by nine. A look for Lindsay for three and only backboard that the final play of the opening quarter. Tough one there for Abby Lindsay. They were nine of 18 and got hot at the end. They scored the final seven. Sidbury got denied inside. Rain Durant. Couple of good defensive plays by Durant in the paint against this BC Biggs, forcing them to rethink that opportunity to just turn and drive. Eagles gonna have to look out, try to kick something out. Lowell was led by another freshman, Maddie Rice. 10 of the 14 points in the opening quarter for Rice. This is Rodriguez having it blocked. Taya Sidbury not only blocked it, she grabbed it. Running in transition as well to set up the offense here for BC. Running that zone offense, it's in Jai letting it fly for two. Chased her own miss, Nene and Jai. And it's a held ball that'll give it back to Lowell. Well, UMass Lowell trying to do a zone here against Boston College on this inbound play. They're just not able to get it back. And Sidbury is going to go back the other way and block Leilani Rodriguez. Before this UMass full zone to work, they have to move in sync. They can't overcommit. When they are overcommitting, BC is exposing them down low in the paint. A lot of easy point paints for Boston College. There was a foul on the full court pressure for Boston College. It went against Njai. And now this time, Maddie Race brings it up, beating that press into the front court. Riverhawks just 7 of 19 as a team. Everybody not named Maddie Rice 2 for 13. Make that 2 for 14. Rice is 5 of 6. Neither of these players are following their shots. I don't know if they've watched Love in Basketball, but you can't just sit there and strike a pose after shooting. you got to go chase that ball. Sticking with that zone, Lewis. Sidbury tries a 3 against it. Oh, halfway in. Wagner grabs the board, and she'll head to the line. Again, it's just that there's an exposure in that middle of the zone where there's too much overcommitment. You're worried about the pass out, so you're, you're moving too far out, and BC's exposing, whether it's Sidbury or, or Wagner, they're getting right under the bucket to try to get these easy opportunities. You're going to see it here. It's a long three. No gold jerseys are around, but you see right there, not a clean field on the, on the rebound. It allows Boston College an easy chance to pick that up. One of the adages about playing zone is that it's always hard to defensive rebound out of a zone defense, at least harder than if you're playing a man-to-man. -man. Yeah, absolutely. That turn, you got to track the rebound, and where you are positionally, sometimes those rebounds go just to the left, just to the right. So you have teams that are facing their shots that are able to track down those rebounds a little bit better than a defensive player whose back is turned and maybe has to adjust and see where, you know, feel where that offensive player may be. Six now for Wagner. Boston College the last nine points in this game to open up the first double-digit lead of the day. It's been a while between points here for the Riverhawks. Foul underneath going against Kayla Ivey. Had a little switch there. They ended up with the point guard Ivey on the big Rain Durant. They tried to get it down low to their bigs, whether it's Coombs or, or Durant. They just haven't had an open lane. BC's active hands make it really difficult. It's a really good Boston College team, one of the tops in steals in the nation. So UMass Lowell has to rethink some of those opportunities before giving up a turnover. Lowell has not played the starting center that they've had for five games this year, Alex Kitchenko, yet today. Nice play. And wide open for the layup is Sari Worley. Freshman from Philadelphia is on the board. That ends the drought for the moment. 
Sidbury's wide open. Oh, didn't finish. I think she was surprised how open she was. I think she saw the seized part and decided, oh, I got to go take it. That'd be Lindsay. And out of the top, Worley. You're going to go through growing pains when you're playing five freshmen regularly, and that's what UMass Lola is finding early in the season. Worley, one of them. Jumper for two from inside the paint, Tiana Todd. Anyway, we talked to Denise King. She said that. She said that these are players that are going to learn. They're making that transition from either the high school or AAU game to the collegiate game. It's a lot bigger, a lot faster, and you got to be able to adjust. Entry in for Durant, knocked away. Boston College had a steal, but they couldn't hold on to it. Out of bounds off of BC. This is the roster overhaul that we've referred to. You see six of 12 who were on the roster last year, not back, but that includes all five starters. Here's Kachenko just in for the first time, and she hit the rim. Yeah, Rodriguez and Teal, the only two returners from a year ago that saw some action or were on the roster. Bailey turned it over. Sydney Watkins, one of the best thefts in the country thus far this year. He's averaging over three steals per game. And for Lowell, playing seven newcomers in their rotation. After losing five starters, four of those five starters transferred elsewhere. So it's a retool and then some. Rodriguez, one of the few familiar names back. You said it, played at Worcester Academy, knows a lot of these local products, has played against them, whether in high school or in years past. Rodriguez is not afraid to shoot when a bigger defender's on her. Second bucket, Leilani Rodriguez. And Sidbury lost it. Again, looked like she had a pretty easy lane to the hoop. Yeah, if it wasn't for Kachenko putting that arm out and disrupting that that drive, then that's another easy bucket for Boston College. So, hold a better job there to keep the hands active, but again, just too much overcommitment on the zone defense, especially on the bottom half of the zone. Sidbury going out after that turnover in favor of the freshman crush of Etz. There you see the native of Israel, Alex Gitchenko, transfer from Georgia State. Played on the national team for Team Israel. Steal beautifully done. That was JoJo Lacey anticipating and a solo act for the two. About this first half for JoJo Lacey, building off the performance against Kentucky where she had 15, already up to eight. Got backup guard Tasha Lima in there who threw that pass for Lowell that led to the breakaway. Abby Lindsay tries it again. She still has not been able to find the mark. It's gonna be a foul, yeah. Thought so as Fresh Vets got crashed in too. Orly just couldn't keep her momentum from going into and it's another good steal for JoJo Lacey and just outpaces everybody on the floor to get the easy lay-in on the fast break. Tasha Lima, junior from Roslindale, Mass, is the one who threw the pass. Ava McGee has checked in for the first time in five games for Boston College. Reserve guard. McGee in the backcourt right now with Todd. It was Todd who turned it over. 11-point lead that matches the largest for Boston College just over midway through the second quarter. Leilani Rodriguez inside for Gitchenko knocked away the denial by Todd who was fronting. Lacey from the wing. Krashevets, nice move up and under. Lily Krashevets. Great job, especially with a smaller defender on her, not to draw a charge, not to get called for a foul, just great arm movement to create the space and protect the ball and clean finish off the glass. Krashevets with four off the bench. Tasha Lima missed the first four games of the season. Lindsay threw it away. So it's a turnover. Well, they said that was tipped. So Lowell keeps it, 11 to shoot. Lily Krashevets on the offensive board and a little up and under. Boston College, largest lead up to 13.
playing for the fourth time in the last five seasons. And last year, Lewis, it was the season opener with Boston College pulling away. Yeah, the Eagles started the third quarter with a 20-0 run to open up an advantage. Dontavia Wagner with 17 points. JoJo Lacey, she loves playing this UMass Lowell team. She has 16 last year, up to eight this season. It was the third highest scoring output for Boston College on the year last year. They're coming off their best scoring output against Kentucky. Maybe they can build off of that here. You see the series history, the seventh all time. Last season, that victory came in Chestnut Hill. You see scoring 81 plus in three meetings against the River Hawks. And they force a five second call to the Eagles. Coming out of the timeout, good defense on the inbounds. And a turnover. So BC a chance to extend the largest lead. When you look at that series history, so they've played six times prior. And under Coach McNamee, BC has won by 28 points, 50 points, and 43 points. So it has been one-sided. Kind of BC story against all the local rivals here. Fresh of vets, couldn't finish. Wagner can, chasing the miss. Dontavia Wagner doing what she does best. It's a great job creating second chance opportunities. Rodriguez had her pocket picked by Tiana Todd at midcourt. Wagner again in traffic, no problem. Four points in about 10 seconds. That's a tough finish, too. A couple of blue jerseys draped all over her. She wanted a foul, but ended up just going back down court celebrating. Eight nothing run for BC. The point guard is Watkins, and that didn't drop. Wagner off the glass. BC trying to blow it open here. Todd fouled on the release and almost got the three point opportunity. This was a two-point game late in the first quarter. Yeah, UMass Lowell did a great job kind of keeping themselves around it. But you see here, this is what makes BC so dangerous, especially on the defensive end. When they're on defensively, they can go into transition. They'll set up down low and utilize the good shooters in Wagner or Daly. Not afraid to drive when they need to. And even on that last play you saw with Todd, she was looking for opportunities down low, didn't see anything, decided to take a shot while UMass was still scrambling to get back into defensive position, and it led to a foul. Trying to make it a 10-0 run and a 19-point lead. Deanna Todd able to do just that as we approach three minutes to go before halftime. Great stretch here for Boston College to blow this thing open. Wagner with 10 leads the way. Lindsay has gone 0 for 5. She has been a marked woman. Nothing Rick. easy. No, nope. you're right. Now it's Lazama drawing the assignment. Kayla Lazama. Rodriguez got open but couldn't hit it. There's Lindsay. And she'll go to the line for the chance for her first points. It's a great job not looking to kick it back out, especially with all those trees surrounding her. So goes up, draws the foul. I do like the Mastols not forcing these shots. They're waiting for their right shot, and they're stepping up into the mid-range if the three-pointer is not available. Those are what you'd like to see to try to build some confidence or at least get a little hotter on those shots. They do now have six offensive rebounds, the Riverhawks do. And if Coach Mack and her staff are looking for something to nitpick at halftime, I would imagine that's one thing that they'll be talking about. Second chance opportunities. Especially with the size advantage, right? You want to be able to clear out just the one and done, but give another team good chances or more chances than are needed. It allows them to hang around and maybe come back in this game. Here's another thing you can nitpick, a lane violation on a missed free throw to give Lindsay another chance. Coach Mack always talks about defensive discipline, right? You've got to be disciplined on defense. Sometimes you've got to be disciplined on the free throw line, too. That yeah, was an extra point that Lowell is able to get out of that. Lindsay off the 22-point game in their last one at Fordham. Her first two today. Wagner steps inside and didn't hit anything. But there's Crash Evets on the offensive class. Wagner in amongst three defenders. Now it's Daly. Faked the pass and took the layup instead. She also hesitated once those seas parted as well. Realized that she had a lane on the fake pass. It's a sick fake to get two defenders to bite. Six points for Daly. Rain Durant. One of the three freshmen in the starting lineup for Lowell. Watkins. 
finding Rice. That's the first shot Maddie Rice got this whole quarter after she had 10 early points. Went away from her. Absolutely, and even just forcing these shots, you want to see either Durant or even Rice go and drive to the lane. Lindsay took that pass away from Lacey, and that gets Abby Lindsay a run out. Four in a row for her. He said it started at the free throw line, giving the extra shot. There's Wagner slipping under the basket for another hoop. 12 for Dontavia. So smooth when you're able to use the rim as a defender and clear out your own player in front of you. It makes it easier. Here's Durant. Don't call her Kevin, but Rain Durant off the glass and one. Not and a bad last name to have as a basketball player. Great basketball name, right? But that's what we're talking about, Justice. Attacking, trying to find the paint. You see the other side for Boston College. This is what they're able to do. Rotate the ball around. You see that fake pass. Clears out Durant and Watkins. Gives her an open lane. On the other side, Durant was able to do the same thing. Get the feed down low. Not worry about looking for a pass to the outside, but drive and draw the foul. Even though she had been mostly playing off of the bench, he's been the second best rebounder that Lowell has had on the young season, Rain Durant. New Haven, Connecticut native is that freshman. She played with Jada Johnson, who's not in the lineup this season for Boston College, but is a freshman, both of them playing at Hamden Hall. Nice pass to Kreshevitz. She's got her third bucket. Slicey, slicing through the paints was the freshman. Yeah, she's given up the shot and decided, hey, I'm just gonna drive now. And she's found success in the paint. Watkins on the dish, but a travel by Gitchenko. At the layup, had she not had the happy feet. Yeah, you can't slide. Can't slide, it's gonna be a travel all the time, but that's a good move to try to get the defense in the air. Again, you gotta keep those feet. Gotta shuffle instead of slide. We will talk to Joanna Burnaby McNamee before she makes her way into the locker room after these final 25 seconds. About a 10 second game clock, shot clock differential here for Boston College. They throw it away. Jojo Lacey, a little miscommunication. So now the shot clock turned off for the Riverhawks here. An opportunity to hold for the final one of the half if they so choose. Final 10 seconds, and it's in the hands of the floor general, Sydney Watkins. And she forced the issue. Got the foul on Crash Evets for two free throws. Love to see them do that more in the second half. Just drive, try to draw fouls on this Boston College team. Try to get some opportunities at the stripe. Put BC in the bonus. You see it here again. Just head up, knows what she wants to do with the ball. Gets the commitment there from McGee. So it opens up that lane to the left side. Yeah. See Rice really shine in that first quarter here in the second. Haven't really seen who's the next player to step up. And that's part of this young team for Denise King is who are the players that are going to be the reliable ones, the more consistent ones on the floor? Sydney Watkins averaging seven points, seven rebounds, three assists, three steals. That's why we say she does a little bit of everything. Miami, Ohio transfer. Five seconds after she split the trip. Todd going the distance. Todd all the way. It counts at the buzzer. Deanna Todd. Just took it 92 feet, and Boston College extends its halftime lead up to against BC and then Brown and UMass, but finally play in Lowell against Dartmouth. Yeah, eight of their first nine games this season will be on the road for the Riverhawks. BC in possession, third quarter underway. Andrea Daly right to work. And the lead is up to 21 points, and they steal the inbounds. Deanna Todd scores. And it is all Boston College. Wow, what a start to the third. That's just a great job getting right into the press to disrupt the lane and two easy buckets. That one was a step over. Finally into the front court come the Riverhawks. Sydney Watkins in her capable hands. Sidbury overplaying the pass almost out of steal, but it led to Lindsay on the baseline getting blocked. Staying with it, Maddie Rice, and her first basket since the first quarter gives her 12. She's an eye for the ball. She's always finding that opportunity. That one could have been an easy BC rebound. Rice comes back and scores the two points for UMass Lowell. Good aggressive play. 
A minute into the third quarter, Kayla Ivey back out there, had four early assists. And there's her fifth. Nice pass, Andrea Daly scores again. Coach Mack talked about the vision for Ivy. That's one of those plays where you see the streaker, but you got to put the ball in the right spot, too. So not only good vision for Kayla Ivy, but good decision making. And a travel. They trapped Leilani Rodriguez right as she walked across midcourt. Twice now that they've either got it close to the backcourt violation or over and back. And here's that last play from Ivy. You get it behind. It's kind of like a quarterback trying to beat it over the, cor the corner and get it to his receiver. Ivy just drops it in the only place she can get it in an easy bucket. Six to two to start the second half. And now Todd for three. Nine to two to start the third quarter for Boston College. Five of them from Tiana Todd. Here's some trouble. Oh boy, Watkins was absolutely being harassed and they'll only keep possession because they have the arrow. Talk about defense. This is some incredible defense for Boston College right here. Well, first, this offensive play. Good movement to, to move this zone out of position. Ivy's going to draw both guards to the left side. That opens up the shot for Todd. But on the defensive end, BC not giving UMass Lowell anything easy from the inbound all the way down court. Largest lead is now up to 26 points suddenly. They've added seven onto the halftime advantage here in two minutes. Nice move inside by Rain Durant. Freshman scores. Sidbury trying to beat the Riverhawks down the court. Saved it inbounds as you watched Durant get back. Same spot, Todd. Same result, Todd. She scored eight points in the first two and a half minutes of the third quarter. It's beautifully done. Press beaten, but Wagner rejecting Rain Durant right at the rim. Wagner the block, the assist from Todd, the layup by Daly. It is 14-4 to, to start the third quarter for BC. I like Coach King not taking a timeout. You gotta let this young team figure it out. Lindsay couldn't hit from that three on the left wing. All BC, the run out, Wagner right to the rack. And a foul whistle, she'll get two at the line. Kind of reminds you of the meeting between these teams last season when Boston College opened the third quarter 20 to zero on a run. And 14 to four here today thus far in the opening minutes of the third. And it's again, defense leading to offense. The block for Dontavia Wagner. Dana Todd in transition is gonna find Daly and Boston College is a threat in transition. Wagner now two of three at the line. She had a free throw to give her team the lead Thursday at Kentucky in the closing seconds that she couldn't hit. And that was right before Kentucky scored the game-winning bucket. 0 for 2 there. The lead remains 29. Talked about giving teams chances to win. That was that Kentucky game for Boston College. UMass Lowell had a couple of those against LeMoyne and BU. Durant forcing the issue there. And she got the foul whistled. Couple of free throws for Rain Durant. Wagner is called for the personal inside. Ran a thousand point score in high school, average 17.8 was all net sack. She played against some really talented individuals in her high school days and even in the AAU level. We were talking about how the Riverhawks had a week off before this game, and it's just another chance for the freshmen to grow a little bit. Durant, over the first six games, was averaging only two points a game. But how about this? She's come in and put up eight already at Boston College today as she moved into the starting lineup. That's what Coach King's going to be looking for throughout the non-conference, just development. You want to be the best team at getting better as the season progresses. Zone defense, and that leads to a turnover on the entry pass that was forced into Taya Sidbury. Todd was just trying to lead Sidbury down towards the bucket, but Sid was heading up towards the free throw line. In the freshman bigs of Rice and Durant combining for 20 of the 31 Lowell points today, there is Rice right on cue, but it rolled off into the waiting arms of Jojo Lacey. 
Ooh, tough catch. Wagner foul. All right, he's popping right back up. Misses the layup. Gets back down the opposite end of the court to, to play some defense on Wagner. Gets called for the foul, but then just pops right back up like nothing. That's the kind of attitude that Denise King wants from her players in this type of system. Four minutes into the second half. 28-point Boston College lead. Lacey wide open. Missed the layup. Good inbounds play. Abby Lindsay on the rebound for Lowell. Those are the kind of shots you see in your sleep. Ah, how did it not go in? Trust me, you remember those misses more than those makes sometimes. Speaking of how did it not go in, how did that not drop there for Sydney Watkins? But Lacey fumbled the ball out of bounds. And Lowell gets another chance. Coach Mack wanted a foul there down low, but you're going to see it's just going to get poked. That one, nice little roll here, but doesn't fall in. Lacey wanted a foul, and Coach Mack wanted a foul on that one. Yeah, Watkins stayed with it after she missed the bunny. 28-point game. It was 19 at halftime. Watkins cross-court pass, three-point shot. Sari Worley, freshman, coming off the bench as her second bucket. Also comes from an athletic family. Her father, Eric, played basketball at Westchester University. It's only the second three-pointer of her young career. One out of seven from long range. First four games that she got into. Sidberry rolled off. Good look again. Wagner got her hands on the rebound, but it's Lowell that's got it instead. And a foul against JoJo Lacey. Nice little response here last few possessions by UMass Lowell after they fell behind through the third quarter. A familiar face among these parts in enemy territory. Stephanie Murphy Thorpe was one of the great BC players of all time. Yeah, fourth all-time in Boston College history with over 17,000 points. 2007 ACC Rookie of the Year. Also spent some time with the Connecticut Sun, played in Europe, was the Romania League MVP back in 2015. You know, when you talk about defense, and we joked with Denise King about how both of them have been really great defenders in their career, you want to have people on your staff that can help develop good defenses, and that's what Denise King has been able to do with her assistant coaches, including Stephanie Murphy Thorpe. Fourth all-time leading scorer, Boston College women's basketball history. It's gotta be weird for her to sit on that bench in this building. These teams have been playing pretty much every year, though. She'll get used to it. So she gets an opportunity to maybe be a head coach at some point in her career. Beg your pardon there, Lewis. That's out of bounds. The turnover not deflected, even though Sydney Watkins thought it was. I know you know this feeling, Josh, but when you watch a player play in college, then they go through their professional career, now they're on the coaching ranks, it makes you feel kind of old a little bit. I, I know <laughs> the feeling. I abs yep, I hear you, Lewis. Time flies, my friend. It does. <laughs> and it marches on. Out of the corner, Todd left side, third of the third quarter. Long range, Tiana Todd. And a game high 17 points. How about that? Just not afraid to pull the trigger. Just get some space. Daly knocked that one out of bounds over the sideline. It'll stay with the Riverhawks. That timeout, freshman Lily Kreshevets checked in for the first time in the half for BC. It's been the Tiana Todd show here after halftime. Yeah, again, just finding some space and then not afraid to shoot, especially if UMass Lowell is going to give you that space. Why not just take it? Durant hands off for fellow freshman Abby Lindsay, who got tripped. A non shooting foul. Another freshman in there for Joanna Burnaby McNamee is Nene and Jai. So, one of those players that we talked about that can really find a rhythm once she gets comfortable with the college game. Played some really good AAU basketball. Slashing through the Paint and a bucket inside Sydney Watkins. The first one she said, Lewis, she was 0 for 6. Good job keeping control there as she drove through the lanes to make sure she didn't give it up. There's Njai, and she got fouled on the reverse. Whistle came late, and that's 
going to irk the Riverhawks, no doubt. But the whistle came indeed. Again, I got I, you, Maddie Rice called for the foul, but she's walking away like, you know what? All right, whatever. I didn't foul her, but she's not putting up too much of a stink about it. And that's the type of attitude you want, right? You want players who are just going to go right back to work. All right, you call the foul. Let's get to the line. Let's make sure that we, you know, work on getting better as this game gets on. So you just see that type of attitude from such a young player, especially when, you know, with this generation with social media and all that. You, that's the type of profile that you want in a player. Been averaging three points a game has in Jai, originally from Senegal, high school in Arizona. And now college hoops in Boston. Her first two points today. 28 point lead, it's been as large as 29. Kayla Lazama getting some run here in the third. One of those games where you can afford to allow more minutes to some of the players that don't see it on a starting base or in the rotation. This backdoor pass on the baseline, those standing out of bounds as she caught it was Sari Worley. Another turnover there for the Riverhawks. But here's the thing with Boston College, you were talking about having an opportunity to play the bench today. They're, they're finally back at home and they the last five games on the road all came against power six opponents. Jojo Lacey misses for three. It was a very, very challenging five-game trip there against teams out of the Big East, teams out of the Big Ten, SEC at Kentucky on Thursday night. That is a, a gauntlet that Boston College had to go through there in November. Yeah, you get a Marquette team that's receiving votes, a Wisconsin team that has been in the tournament in years past, a Providence team that is really developing in the past couple of years to be a successful program. That Ohio State team we've seen have good success in the in the tournament, and you can see the results. Some of those games are close, and we've talked about early on this non-conference slate. You want to have some of those games back, but if not, you're going to be able to use what you learn in those games. Maddie Rice couldn't hit it followed her miss and got rejected by Andrea Daly. Ivy leads the break. The trailer is Daly. Nice Euro step and a finish at the rim. 14 for Andrea Daly. Again, defense to offense. The block on one end of the court leads to the drive on the other end, and that's what allowed BC to open up this lead here in the second half. 30 points for the first time on the margin. And Lindsay turned it over. Oh, no. Actually was hit before it went out by Daly, so it'll be kept by Lowell. Daly on each end of the court, as you said. So hard to be in the air and try to adjust your hands as a player is also adjusting the shot. And then right there, fake step through to the right, got Rice to commit, opened up the lane in the paint. Timeout is called. Lowell has stopped play with a 30-point deficit late third quarter action. Keep it right here on ACC Network Extra. Rated team, when did you last really feel some time when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research? This is game-changing research that helps save lives, and you can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donates. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research and by any means necessary, we hope that you'll be able to help donate to the cause. Great, great initiative that ESPN puts on this time of year, every season, Lewis. Every year, those speeches, whether it's Stuart Scott or Coach V, it, it, it always hits you. You always know that somebody's impacted somewhere, so. There's Wagner. Octavia's first basket here of the third quarter as she gets out in transition to grow the lead to 32. 14th point of the game for Dontavia and a foul on the other end. I hate that. As soon as she causes the foul, she looks at Coach Mack and points to herself, says, my bad, my bad. It's about being disciplined. And again, even in games like this where it's 68-36, you want your players to develop and grow and learn and not just get comfortable. Everything's a learning experience every minute of every game. And in the bonus here in the third quarter for Lowell, so a couple of free throws for Sydney Watkins. 
Wagner has only been shooting 38% thus far this season, which is not what they were accustomed to seeing last year when she was the team's leading scorer. Good to see her get it going here last couple of games. She's six for nine today. That's the thing with Wagner. Sometimes you'll have your efficient nights, but some nights you just got to let her shoot and try to figure it out. And that's what BC has allowed her to do, build some confidence there at the position while taking shots, driving. We've talked about just different ways Boston College can hurt you. Ava McGee on the drive at the bottom of the rim with the shot. Out of bounds going back to Lowell. Ava McGee getting a rare opportunity to see the court. Back in the game is Alex Gitchenko, the native of Israel. Came off the bench today for Coach King. She gets the ball here about 22 feet away. And got fouled. She'll get a chance for some points at the line as Krashevets hit Gitchenko. No, she got the foul there, but you want to be able to protect that ball, either drive it over those arms that are going to stay low, especially with that size for Gitchenko. You want to just protect it in a way that it's not just keeping it low to your side. And just, those, oh, sorry, sorry Lewis. Just looks like you want to be able to, to develop that as you continue to grow, especially with such a young team. First point of the day for Gitchenko, one of two Israeli players on this Lowell roster. Ella Nur is out for the season, unfortunately. And Badenov from Austria also not healthy. Billy Carrera, we were told, would come back potentially in play today from concussion protocol, but she hasn't been able to. So leading scorer missing a third consecutive game, it appears. Turnover. That leads to the fast break opportunity here. And a couple of free throws coming up for Sydney Watkins again. It's a good job by Watkins. She looked to her left, saw that there were no blue jerseys running down court with her. Had to size up the defender. Was patient enough to get McGee in the air. Excuse me, it was Lazama there. Was running down court. Able to get her in the air and draw the foul. When Lowell gets Millie Carrera back, whenever that is, and it may be in their next game Tuesday at Brown, that will be a, a big boost. Six-year player, second year here at Lowell, and she averages 11 points a game. That's an absence from the offense they've had a hard time overcoming. That's a second three-point make today for Kayla Ivey. Good to see shots going through the net for the redshirt junior floor general. Yeah, she looks good offensively here today. She looks like she's getting back into 110% where she likes to be coming back from that injury. Lindsay still unable to find the range. But if Ivy can develop that shot and it's in her repertoire as the season gets into conference play, that's a guard that a lot of ACC teams are gonna have to game plan for. That'd be Lindsay, one for nine today, by the way. There's another steal by Watkins at the third quarter buzzer. Only backboard for Watkins. BC grew the lead up to 30 points. With more than a dozen different D1 teams participating in this initiative, it's such a good one. Taya Sidbury lets fly and hits a three to begin the fourth quarter. The largest lead of the day is 33 points. One thing that I mentioned right as we were going to break, Lewis, the three-point shooting for Boston College, which has had to be just correct statistically, it's been one of the worst in the country for a lot of this season. It has been great here today. They're 8 for 14 from beyond the arc. Yeah, BC came in 22% on the season from the three-point line. They're up to 57%, 8 of 14, as you mentioned. On the other side, UMass Lowell, one of their best Stats was their three-point uh, shot. They came in at about 32%. They're at 8.3 today at 1 for 12. So just shows you that when BC's defense is rolling, that's one tough team to beat. Step into the basket is Rice. How about that on cue? Maddie Rice with the step through and one. She has been their best player today. And I don't think you can find a close second, Lewis, to the freshman Maddie Rice. She has not been afraid to attack. She's not been afraid to shoot. 
just a, a good attitude, right? On a day where she got 10 points in the first quarter, didn't really get opportunities in the second, didn't let that phase her. She continues to attack and continues to score for the River Hawks. 15 points now. 10 of those came in the first quarter. Deficit trimmed back to 30. We were talking about her dad earlier, Antonio Rice. He played for the Cowboys in the NFL. Lacey, nice pass. And Sidbury couldn't hit it. They uh, chased her miss, and it's knocked out of bounds by UMass Lowell. Well, Maddie, such a close relationship with her father. Her favorite sports memory was hitting the game-winning free throws in the championship game while her father, Antonio, was battling cancer. Got to share that moment with him, her teammates. So that's one that she'll always live with. Andrea Daly, BC's run some really good underneath inbounds plays today to get them layups. Add another one to the list there for Andrea Daly. Again, just good finish down low. Not afraid to absorb the contact and use the glass sometimes. 16 for Daly. Right at her season's average all of a sudden. It's been a quiet 16. These are the plays that you get by what you do in practice and in shoot-arounds even leading up to the game. Those designed underneath inbounds plays. The inbound plays today for Boston College have been great. They've opened up so many lanes in the paint for easy chances. Rice on the kick out to the baseline for Watkins. Smooth two-point jumper, Sydney Watkins. And shot it well. Now just two of nine for the floor general of the Riverhawks. Nene Njai. Njai is going to let it fly. Almost made it. Spun around. It's a shot we've been talking about. She's not afraid to shoot that three-point shot. Worley misses on the other end. Sari Worley's miss. Rebounded by Andrea Daly for Boston College. Just over two minutes into the fourth quarter. Daly against the zone. Nice dish. That's how you beat a zone. A little high low by the bigs, and Taya Sidbury gets another easy layup. And to develop a player like Sidbury to get comfortable in the paint, get comfortable with getting some contact. It's going to lead to a lot of success down low for Boston College. It was knocked out of bounds by Tiana Todd. And hey, watch this pass. Draw the defense and just dump it off for the layup. That's what happens when you make shots during a game, the defense will respect you. So seven of eight games with 10 plus points, meeting the team in points per game. You can make it eight of nine now. With 16 here this afternoon. Junior from Miami having a, a coming out party thus far this season. Rain Durant, too strong. Looking for the largest lead of the day with any two-point basket. Lazama. Sidbury from the mid-post. Todd for three out of the corner. Tiana, only her second miss from three-point territory. She made three in the third quarter. Just having a game as that's, yeah, it's double dribble. So head to the bench for a nice break here, but Todd having one of the games of her careers as well. It's actually her only second miss shot of any kind. Six of eight from the field overall. Did a couple of free throws too. 17 points. 16 against Kentucky. That's been even as Boston College has struggled from three-point range a lot of the season. She's been the one consistent outside threat. Sophomore from Canada, Tiana Todd. Lacey missed that one. BC's going to snap its three-game losing skid today. Just getting a five-game homestand started. Pasha Lima lost it. Lacey took it away, and then Lacey pushed off. Gives it right back to Lowell. This homestand will continue on Wednesday night for Boston College. They welcome another UMass. This time, the flagship, Amherst, is coming to town. Got to get those local rivalries in, as you see. Again, good defense. JoJo Lacey, 
It's one of those players that when she's in rhythm, you can really add a spark off the bench for Boston College. Started off the game really well with a couple of three-pointers. Now really trying to lock this down on the defensive end for the Eagles. Lacey's turned it over four times in the game. And we get another turnover. Offensive foul. The legal screen away from the ball. That was Gachenko. Good 15 feet away from where the ball was being dribbled. It's a battle for positioning. Got a little too aggressive down there. Ivy and Wagner are the only starters in the game at the moment for Boston College. I got it. Good hands, Josh. Yep, no yeah. There you go, bud. Hands of steel. More like stone. Didn't fumble the rock. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, a little bobble, but we'll control it. We're all good. That's a good, good hand there. Thanks, bud. <laughs> no warm-up either. You got the officials giving you compliments, too? Did she? Yeah. <laughs> said the, nice hands there. <laughs> the bobble came because I got this big watch on my left hand. It's weighing you down yeah, on that was, left side. Was, I felt it. <laughs> Five and a half to go. And the lead remains at 32. Almost an over and back there. Didn't matter because Rodriguez had it taken away by Ivy and Wagner. Puts it in, her 16th point. Off the turnover that time. And these, she just rips it right back. Another steal. Lazama scores. Dontavia Wagner doing what she does best. She just said, give me that. Three in a row. How about that one? Lazama. Led to Lacey almost turning it over, but it was blocked. You got Watkins with a contact issue. You got Gachenko down on the ground. That was a chaotic player for UMass Lowell. It's an injury stoppage, and that brings us to our final media timeout of the afternoon. I got three steals in a row here, Lewis, and that, <laughs> this is Joanna Burnaby McNamee's brand of basketball in a nutshell. Just a great job. Unselfish play. Boston College rolling here in Chestnut Hill. 82-46 as we head to the break. Rated team. When did you last really feel something? Gibchenko from Mass Lowell getting over onto the bench. That injury whistle stopped play following this wild three-steal sequence for BC Lewis. Yeah, Ivy's the first one to just go after it on this full-court press from Boston College. Eagles up to 10 steals currently, led by Todd, who has three. But again, just aggressive play to yank that from Rodriguez. And then Watkins gets trapped in the corner. You never want to get trapped on a full-court press in the corner. And then again, good distribution from the guard outside to JoJo Lacey. Meanwhile, Ava McGee got a layup as we come back to live action, and she made it. Ava McGee, who had not played for Boston College in the previous four games. It's an eight nothing run for BC. All of a sudden, they're leading this game by 38 points. That was McGee's first basket of the season, by the way. Watkins gets fouled by Kreshevets. Hard to keep up with all the scoring we're seeing here. Yeah, the sophomore getting involved here on a good catch and finish there in the paint. Got to get that depth, some more opportunities to get comfortable at this collegiate game. And when you're in a game like this where it's 84-46, you have that opportunity afforded to you. In the act of shooting was Sydney Watkins. Making a nice little living at the foul line. These will be her seventh and eighth. Chance to get into double figures here. She does. 10 points, three assists. How about that after the start she had? Was a little rough in the first half, but able to bounce back here in the second half. Still got four starters in the game for Lowell. Kayla Ivey, that would have been her third from three-point range. It just rimmed out. 
the only reserve in there for Coach King is Sari Worley. Rodriguez, pocket pass into the middle. And this is Abby Lindsay. She just hasn't found the range today. Leaves Lindsay one for 10. Ivy, what a dish. Wagner couldn't hit it. Got blocked. From a seated position, Wagner tried to throw a pass that got taken away. A little chaotic there on that drive. Lindsay still trying it. That's an offensive foul, no basket. Kayla Lazama set herself to take the charge. Always love when a player steps up, absorbs that contact, and draws a charge. Lazama has done it defensively throughout her career, is not afraid to just stand up, especially against those big ACC teams. That time, it's the guards to just get that elbow extended. Boston College with a balanced scoring effort. Everybody who has played has scored. McGee, offensive foul on Ava McGee, a push off. She's got some contact up top too, maybe on the lip there of Durant. Caught her for extending that arm. That wacky inflatable two guy commercial. That's what you can't do inside the paint. Just back to the balanced scoring for Boston College, by the way. Ten players have played. All of them have at least two points, and only three of them are in double figures. That's the kind of distribution that you like to see in a game like this. Well, again, it's building off of what they had in that Kentucky game where they felt really good about, obviously not the outcome, but what they what they learned about themselves. In that game, they had five players in double digits. Today, you have three with Todd with 17 points. So it just shows you when they're able to distribute the way they are, it's going to be leading to success. Whoa, up and under. And a finish by Nene and Jai, the freshman. That was a pretty move to the hoop. So lengthy. It just becomes easy at that point when you're making the move and then it opens up for you. 38-point lead matches the largest of the day. Boston College has now removed all of its starters. And Rain Durant unable to hit off the glass. Addy Rice checked. And she got it for a moment. BC throws it away. Durant tries it again. No dice again for Rain. R-A-Y-N-E. Rain. Lazama thought about it. We approach two minutes to go. McGee found Krashevets and one. Lily Krashevets. Eighth point of the game for the freshman. Let's go back to this up and under in Euro. Yeah, just a beautiful move for Njai. He's had a lot of different experiences, whether it's in the international game, on the AAU level. She has really learned from a lot of different coaches on how to expand her game. That was her fourth point. Meanwhile, Crash Evets completes the three-point play. Career high nine points today for the freshman from Hungary. And a steal that time by BC. Nope, they don't have the arrow. Almost a steal there by Ava McGee. Good aggressive hands for Boston College. We've said it all game long. Up to now, 11 steals. They have nine blocks, 22 assists on 36 made buckets. There's Abby Lindsay finally hitting from long range. First in five attempts. She drew a lot more attention today after scoring 22 at Fordham. Pressure Vets was in the paint for three seconds and shows she's called for the turnover. Well, sometimes you're going to get a good game and get on the scouting report for your next opponent. I love to see that Lindsay hasn't been afraid to shoot. Even though she's struggled today, she's still finding chances. We saw in the last opportunity, she moved from the three-point line inside to try to make it an easier jumper. But again, just when you're working with so many young players, you want to make sure that they're developing. Maybe have some rough games like this, but don't let it get to you, right? As, as a shooter, as a player, you want to just break through those bad habits and find opportunities to create new good ones. Denise King called a timeout just to sub, sub some players in here. 
Get to see Gabby Ross back on the court. JoJo Lacey entered back in for BC and got a steal immediately. Kayla Ivey on the break. Crash events couldn't quite corral that offensive rebound opportunity. Got to take some lessons for you on uh, how to keep that ball in the hands. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that would <laughs> benefit anybody. Here's what's coming up for this long homestand. Four more to go in it. That'll lead us all the way up until the holiday break. And next, UMass coming to town. First Lowell today, then Amherst on Wednesday. Rice, 17 points for the freshman, Maddie Rice. For BC, those combined, the non-conference combined record for those opponents at 7-24. So you're able to get some good games before you start conference play against that Duke team. Meanwhile, onto the road again for Lowell as it will be eight of their first nine games of the season. They're at Brown. That'll be Tuesday night. Fresh events. Offensive rebounds. Unselfish. I think she could have shot that. Wanted to throw the pass to her fellow freshman in Jai. Betcha Coach Mack would uh, say, hey, Lily, shoot it. Absolutely. You can hear her. One of those things where you got a, a young freshman who has to kind of learn through, the, through through experience, right? Get in there, get into those positions where you're going to have to learn how to adjust a shot, learn to either make the pass or take it. She shoots it here. Oh, just a little strong. Good touch. Njai has the rebound. And BC has the arrow this time. You got Njai and Crash Evets doing some good work here in the final minute. UMass Lowell playing to the final buzzer, right? They're putting their hands in there, trying to take that ball away from the Eagles. Ivy for Kreshevets. Double figures for Lily Kreshevets. 11th point. It's funny, we talked to her coach about an hour before the game, and you got a feeling in talking to Joanna Burnaby McNamee that Lily Kreshevets was going to have a pretty big day. She knew it, and it became prophetic can even hear it in the halftime, right? She shouted out, Lily, about how she was doing in that first half. Ivy ends the game by knocking away a pass. That's a fitting way for this one to come to its end. Boston College disruptive from the outset and dominance. Just from start to finish, BC got a little scare there when you 